All right, Algebra 1. We're going to combine two screencasts here, save a little bit of time. One of the screencasts is just learning slope-intercept form and writing things in slope-intercept form. And then the next one, or writing and, gra or writing and graphing, and then the next section is taking the graph and writing it, so going the backwards direction. So I went ahead and combined, the, combined, it, combined both of those sections so we can get them both together. So let's look at this. Slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. This is going to be the easiest form to graph in. In this equation, they're going to give us two things. They're going to give us m, which is the slope. That's what we've been focusing on. And they're going to give us b, which is the y-intercept. Okay, y-intercept being where the line crosses the y-axis. So I can easily graph something if I have those two things. But in its general form, let's say they give you this equation. And they ask you, what's the slope and what's the y-intercept? At its basic form, the slope is the number in front of the x. So in this case, our slope is going to be 1 half. And then the y-intercept is the number that's out by itself, which is just going to be the negative 6. So I'm going to give you two equations, and then I want you to hit pause. And I want you to find the slope and the y-intercept of each. OK, so go ahead and hit pause and tell me the slope and the y-intercept of each line. OK, we're back. My slope is the number in front of the x, which in this case is negative 4. My y-intercept is positive 9. Over on the second problem, my slope is 2. My y-intercept is 4. Now, what if my equation What if my equation is not in y equals mx plus b form, which means the y is not by itself? Luckily, in chapter 2, we learn how to manipulate equations, so I can get that y by itself. So the thing that's on the y side right now is that positive 4, so I'm going to subtract it over to both sides. Okay, so I now have y equals because it's by itself. I can't combine those. They are not like terms. So it's negative x minus 4. So let's go ahead and find the slope and the y-intercept of this one. So since there's not a number out in front of that x, we know there's an understood 1. And with the negative sign, that makes my slope negative 1 and my y-intercept negative 4. All right, so now we're going to take it one step further. And we're going to graph it. So how about I have y equals x minus 2. Again, the y is by itself. So I know that I have a slope, the imaginary, and not imaginary, but the number in front of the x, the coefficient. That's 1. And the y-intercept is negative 2. Now, what I want you to do is if your slopes are not fractions, please make them fractions. So that's going to be 1 over 1. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So let's go to our y-intercept. On our y-axis, it intercepts at negative 2. 
Now, the reason I want my slope as 1 over 1 is because we found slope using rise over run. So that means I'm going to rise 1 in a positive direction and run 1 in a positive direction. So that's up 1 to the right 1. Up 1 to the right 1. I can make as many points as I want to. I would say that uh, we need a minimum of 3. So go ahead and put th at least 3 on there. And then let's draw this line. Okay, so there you are. Again, I think this is the easiest of the three methods to graph, but that's just my personal opinion. Let's do another one. I'll let you do this one on your own. Okay, so y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. Go ahead and hit pause. And then I want you to graph that and come back and let's see if we get it. Okay, we're back. My y-intercept is 2. And this time my slope is in fraction form already. So I just have it as rise over run. When I rise a negative direction, that means I fall. So from the 2, I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. Then down 1 again and to the right 3. So there's my line. Oop, I don't like that one. That's a pretty good one right there. Okay, so that's graphing using the slope-intercept form. Okay, so if I told you that I had a line that went through 3, 1, and it had a slope of 2. Okay, it went through 3, 1 and had a slope of 2. And I want you to write this in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, I know I can substitute the 2 in there because the 2 is going to go right in front of the x. So now how can I use that point to find out what my y-intercept is? Well, we have an x value here. We have a y value here. So if I bring that equation over here, I'm just going to substitute in my y and x values. So my y value is 1. My x value is 3. Remember that it's b that we're trying to find. That's our y-intercept. So I simplify as much as I can. That's 1 equals 6 plus b. I subtract 6 from both sides. So I get b equals 5. So now I take my y equals 2x plus b and I substitute in b, which I just found to be positive 5. So my equation would be y equals 2x plus 5. Let's try another one. I'm going to write the equation. And then I'm going to give you a point and a slope. OK, go ahead and hit pause. Give this one a shot. Okay, we're back. Let's plug in what we have. We have a y value of 6. We have an m of 1 half. 
we have an x value of negative 4 plus the b we're trying to find. So that's 6 equals, what is half of negative 4? That's going to be negative 2. So we want to get b by itself, so we're going to add 2 to both sides. And so that's b equals 8. So since we have what m is and we have what b is, our equation is y equals 1 half x plus 8. All right, this one's a little intense. It's about 11 minutes long. It's got a lot of material, but it's all basically the same stuff. So just keep a focus on what they're asking for and make sure that you write your problem in the correct form. So that's chapter four, sections one and two, slope intercept form.